This right here is pretty much the best gadget that I have ever made. Yes, really. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm gonna show you why it's useful, what it does, and how you can make one for yourself. So let's get started. Hello everyone, my name's Adam and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about this, the heat press for threaded inserts. I really enjoy using it and it's really great. But in order to understand why it's really good, first I need to talk to you about threaded inserts, which are these little brass things. You basically push them into a plastic part in order to give you like a more durable and stronger thread. You tend to do this using something like a standard soldering iron, you heat it up to whatever temperature it achieves, and then you put a threaded insert on the end and you push it just into the plastic. The trouble with this is the tip of a soldering iron is tapered. So as you apply pressure onto your brass part, which you're pressing in, it tends to get a little bit stuck. So as you're trying to push the threaded insert in, it's fine. But as you try to take the soldering iron back out again, the brass insert can sometimes come with the soldering iron and all you've done is make a big multi-plastic mess. The other thing that's very difficult to get right is to get the threaded insert straight. So doing this by hand and wiggling around and trying to get the threaded insert off the end is all a little bit clumsy. It does work, like don't get me wrong, you can do it. But you have a chance of making a mess. It takes a little while with like an extra piece of metal to hold everything down and in place. And it's just a bit of a fuss. So now you know a little bit about threaded inserts, hopefully now you can see where this might be useful. It does kind of two things, maybe three. Firstly, it will only apply a force directly downwards which is exactly what you want. There's no wiggling around, there's no fussing. It just goes straight in and straight back out again. The second thing it does is it has a slightly different tip. So instead of using a typical standard soldering iron tip, which has a taper, this is a kind of uniquely designed soldering tip, which is not for soldering at all. It's specifically machined to have a flat face at the end. So you can just push vertically downwards without applying any sideward force and not getting latched onto the threaded insert. So those two things make this rig absolutely perfect for putting in threaded inserts. If you don't believe me, let me just give you a quick demonstration. I can just simply align the threaded insert onto the part, pull the jig down, apply pressure, push it in until it gets to the right distance, and then just let go and it comes away. Threaded inserts perfectly in place. We let it cool down and that'll be absolutely fine. And we can just do the same thing again and again, and all of them will come out exactly the same. There are other designs available online to do a very similar job, in fact, mostly the same job, but I didn't have the parts to make them. They looked like they needed very specific bits that I couldn't necessarily get my hands on. So I thought the best thing for me to do is to design one that uses all the bits that I have laying around. If you want to know exactly what parts you need, there's a bill of materials linked in the video description, and that will give you a really good guide as to where you can kind of start, but consider the parts that you do and don't have so you can modify it accordingly. Mm. For the base at the bottom, I've just used a piece of plywood that I had laying around. It, you could 3D print a base, you could 3D print some slightly different legs or something if you wanted to. I think this actually works really well. It's about 150 mil square. For the printed parts, pretty much all of mine are PLA with the one exception, this grip. PETG would probably be fine. You maybe want to give that a test, but I've gone with ABS just to be safe. For the quantities and orientations and STL files for those printed parts, all of that, again, can be found in the video description. The orientations are already preset to the orientation that you need to print them. The one point that's probably like a special part that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. So I've used a NEMA 17 for the counterweight because I have loads of them sitting in a box from dismantling old printers. You don't need a motor that works. It's not being used as a motor. It's literally just a dense weight. And lastly, of course, the soldering iron. I've used the soldering iron that I already had and also can be unplugged from the soldering iron itself and doesn't just plug directly into the mains. These soldering irons, as part of a soldering station, are all generally very different. So I encourage you to modify the grip part and measure your own soldering iron, see what diameter you need, make it just a smidge smaller, and then you can press the soldering iron, press the soldering iron up into it. Other than that, it's mostly just screws, nuts, and V-slot wheels, and some idlers. So very simple bill of materials, very easy to get hold of. 
So now that we've got everything kind of ready to assemble, let me show you how to assemble this from parts. So the tools I'm going to use to assemble is just three mil Allen key, two and a half mil Allen key. I'm going to use an adjustable wrench, but something for M5 nuts. And I'm going to use a longer M3 screw, something like 30 millimeters plus is going to be fine. The other things you'll need is a screwdriver with a bit that's suitable for the type of whiz screws if you're going to be drilling and screwing into a wooden base. And the other thing is a drill with a suitable drill bit or something maybe around two millimeters, something suitable for the wood screws that you're planning to use. The other thing you're going to need is a spanner to be able to tighten your eccentric nuts. Where you start doesn't really matter in terms of assembly order because it all kind of just goes together, but I'm going to start with the feet. So there you have it. For those of you that wanted a better method for inserting threaded inserts via a heat press into a 3D printed part, you now have a pretty full guide on how you can do that. So that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully this has been really useful for those of you looking for a heat press jig for your threaded inserts. I'm just gonna leave you now with a little bit of a montage of using this, adding inserts into printed parts because it's just so satisfying. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
My hair's an absolute mess. <laughs> <laughs>